Hey creeps, it's Cameron again, and welcome back to my channel where I talk about books, movies, writing, and all things spooky. On this episode of Library Macabre, I have part one of my May book haul. Seventy books, I kid you not, and that doesn't even count uh, the books that I received in my Nightworms package. I was going to show all of those too, but I've already done a video about that. I'll link that up there, uh, so you can go and watch that. Uh, you've probably already seen those books, so I thought why spend more time uh, trying to go through those on top of all of these. Uh, also, I received a package in May from uh, Sinister Grin Press. It was a package of five books. I did an unboxing of that, so I'll post that up there as well. If you wanna go watch it, you can, uh, but I'm not gonna show them in this video because it's n enough books as it is. Now, I, I bought a lot of books this month, but I did get a ton of really good deals. Like, I did not spend very much money on each book, probably a dollar or two each, so good deals. A lot of books that I could not pass up. So as always, I'm going to show you what I got for review first. Now, review books. I have been getting a lot of review books lately, uh, and I'm having a really hard time kind of staying up with everything. Anytime I get an offer for a review book, I always let the author or publisher know, hey, I've got a lot to review at the moment. It's going to take me a while to get through all of these. Um, but still, I always feel bad. So I'm really trying hard to stay up on that. But I did end up getting quite a few review books this month, uh, but I have been like turning down a lot of review offers, uh, which makes me feel bad because I know a lot of those authors really need uh, somebody to read and review their books, but uh, you know, can only do so much. Uh, but anyway, uh, here we have a brand new edition of A Place for Sinners by Aaron Dries. I believe this was originally printed by Samhain Press, uh, and this is a reprint from Poltergeist Press, which is a, a new publisher. They've been putting out some really cool books, it looks like, so I'm really curious to check out more of their work. I'm actually currently reading one of their books called uh, Penny for Your Thoughts, which is by Matt Hayward and Robert Ford. Fantastic so far. I'm going to do a full review of that, so I don't want to say too much, but holy crap, that book is amazing. So really excited to read this. Uh, Aaron Dries is a great guy. I follow him on all social media and he's awesome. And I hear his books are equally awesome. So this one should be really cool. I also received a copy of One for the Road by Wesley Southard. I actually already reviewed this. It's very, very short. It was like under 100 pages, so I gave it a quick read and I posted a review of this. Uh, it came out on June 15th. This next one is part of the Resurrected Horrors line from Capricorn Literary. Uh, it's uh, What's Wrong with Valerie. This is by D.A. Fowler, which was originally published in the 90s. Uh, Capricorn Literary has been doing a great job uh, getting some of these older books and reprinting them. And uh, it's, it's nice that they're, you know, putting these really rare books back in print again so you don't have to spend a ton of money trying to track down an original paperback. I also received a copy of The Thrumming Stone, which is by John Burrell and Joe Sullivan. Those are the guys from uh, Cemetery Gates Media, and this is their latest book. These guys, they work really hard. Uh, they put out a ton of books. Like, I think they release, at this point, like two or three books a year. It seems like that. I don't know if that's actually accurate, but uh, it feels like they release a lot, and I don't know how they do it. Uh, but anyway, this one's really cool. It's kind of like a sci-fi horror. It still has those uh, scary stories to tell in the dark kind of illustrations inside. Uh, but this is actually a novella, so this should be really interesting to read. I also received an advanced reader's copy of Twelve Nights at Rotter House by J.W. Oker. He wrote a really cool book called A Season with the Witch, which is all about Salem and uh, the different kind of things that you can do there during Halloween. So it's like a nonfiction travel book. And he's written a lot of nonfiction. He has written uh, a novel before called Death and Douglas, which is a middle grade book, which I still haven't read. Uh, God, there's so much to read. Uh, but anyway, uh, Turner Press sent me this uh, arc for a review. And this is his very first adult horror novel. So this looks awesome. I also received a copy of All Dark Places, which is an anthology that is compiled by J.E. Feldman. And this is published by Dragon Soul Press. So I'm 
really excited to check this out. Love anthologies. And lastly, for the review books, I received copies of Ghosts of New England and Legends of Sleepy Hollow, both by Christopher Rondina. This one right here, Legends of Sleepy Hollow, contains the original novella by Washington Irving, obviously. And then after that, it kind of goes over the history of the Sleepy Hollow legend and uh, the history of the Headless Horseman himself. This book is really nicely designed. There are a lot of illustrations inside, a lot of photographs. Uh, this guy really put a lot of hard work into making this book look as cool as possible. And then uh, this one here, uh, Ghosts of New England, is just uh, ghost stories from all around New England. And uh, again, really nicely designed, lots of cool photographs and illustrations. All right, so now time for a little story. Uh, in the town that I live in, there was once a bookstore called Raven Books. It was in the mall. And this mall is kind of, uh, it's gone downhill over the years. You go in there now, all of the stores are closed up. There's a lot of uh, theft and a lot of other crime that happens in there. You, you wanna be careful when you go in that mall. Um, but anyway, this bookstore used to be in this mall. It was the only reason why I ever went to that mall. Uh, then one day it just closed down and I was really bummed about it because they had a lot of really great used books, a lot of uh, nice horror paperbacks. And then one day, a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about the store and I'm like, you know what, they had to do something with all of that stock. I wonder what happened to all of it. Uh, maybe they opened another store somewhere. So I started searching and I found out that they did in fact reopen a store in my town. So immediately I got my shoes on and I drove to this place and it is a rundown house off the off the highway. Um, very sketchy looking, uh, like holes in the windows. They had like tarps to keep all of the wind and the rain out. The shutters were falling off this place. Uh, no AC. It was just a bunch of just, just bookshelves just kind of thrown against these walls. Some of the walls had graffiti on them. It was just not nice but I, I i went in and i actually found uh some books that i've been looking for for a while so i'm glad that i went uh but it was definitely an, an interesting experience and hopefully they can open um, a better store somewhere um in the near future so i found a few books in the twist plot series this is an 80s uh choose your own adventure style series and um they're pretty rare so this first one here is called the time raider actually written by Arl Stein, which is really cool. First edition, first printing, great shape. I also found a copy of book two, which is called The Train of Terror. Book three, which is called The Formula for Trouble. I like some of the uh, universal monster imagery on that one. And then book five, they didn't have book four, uh, but book five. So I'm glad to have found these. This is actually a really long series, so hopefully I can find some of the other books at some point. And then I found a whole bunch of books in the Warbots series. Uh, this is an like, 80s, early 90s series written by G. Harry Stein. And I, uh, I've been trying to find these for a while. It's a series of 12 books. I have one of them, which is book number seven. Um, but at the store, I was able to find a copy of book three, which is called The Bastard Rebellion. I also got book number four, which is called Sierra Madre, I think. Number five, Operation High Dragon, which is probably my favorite cover of all. It's amazing. Book number eight, Force of Arms. Book nine, Blood Siege. And book 11, Warrior Shield. And then also at this bookstore, I found a couple of really rare uh, horror paperbacks that I have been searching for for a long time. I found a copy of The Tribe, which is by Barry Wood. This is a first printing, with the original uh, die cut cover, which is really nice. Uh, spine creases. I, I typically don't buy books with spine creases because if I did, I'd buy everything and I completely lose control. <laughs> but. Uh, I went ahead and bought this one because it was like $2 for first printing. And it's still in pretty nice shape, even though it's got the uh, creases on the spine. And the same case for this one. This is Hobgoblin, which is by John Coyne. Uh, it's a book I've been looking for forever, so I didn't really mind that it's not in the best of condition. Uh, but it's got the nice die cut cover inlay right there. And then lastly, for this part of the book haul, my good buddy, Edward Lorne, uh, hosted a book sale on Twitter and he was selling a bunch of books from his collection for a dollar each. Great deal. 
Uh, so obviously I had to buy a few books from him uh, because I couldn't pass it up. So the first one I have here is Sandman by William W. Johnstone. Classic zebra cover right there. I can't believe he was selling this for a dollar. I mean, it's not in great shape. It's definitely uh, seen better days. Uh, but for a reading copy of this for a dollar, couldn't pass it up. I also got a copy of The Mountain King by Rick Altala. It's kind of a later uh, leisure paperback. Also, Strangler by Simon Clark, another later leisure book. Death's Dominion, also by Simon Clark. Hexes by Tom Piccarilli. A Lower Deep by Tom Piccarilli. I love the cover on that one. Horror Times 10, which is a horror anthology. I believe this was published in 1967. Animals by John Skip and Craig Spector. I've been looking for this forever. Uh, so it's in very nice shape. There's like one little spine crease, but otherwise looks really nice. So I'm glad that I could uh, complete my Craig and Spector uh, collaboration collection. Creepers by Robert Craig. Uh, another one that's definitely seen better days, but for a reading copy for a dollar, can't beat it. And then I also told Edward Lauren to throw in a copy of one of his books. I didn't care which one because I've, I've not read any of his actual full-length novels before. I've read a couple of novellas, but that's about it. So he threw in a copy of Bay's End, which I've heard great things about. This one sounds really cool. Uh, small town horror. So very excited to read this. And that is all I'm going to show for tonight. Uh, I do have part two that'll be coming in the next week or so. Uh, but I've, I've showed it enough for tonight. Uh, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Later, creeps.